Hey, it's exciting to be here. Hey, real quick, how many guys this is your first lead seminar? Who's first? Okay, two. How many second? Second, third, fourth, third, fourth, somewhere fifth, sixth. Brittany, five, six. Caitlin, I don't even know. Seven, eight, seven, seven, eight, somewhere in that range. Good deal. All right. Who knows? Who knows the title of uh, this seminar? It is how to fail, right? Or more. More importantly, probably why to try, right? So, um, anybody figure out the relationship between juggling and your biggest failure? Well, when you're juggling, like you keep, even if you drop the ball, you keep trying to pick it up and try again, and you're asking other people, like, how are you doing this? Can you help me? And, like, just you keep trying to get it right every time until you get it perfect. Not bad. Anybody else have a different take? I Brit? think when you're juggling like too many aspects of your life, you get overwhelmed and then you just fail. Like, oh. <laughs> you drop them all. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I, I came up with, or, or where I started thinking about this idea for this topic in seminar. Um, so Thursday of last week, I was in, um, I was in uh, Salt Lake, or outside Salt Lake City at Snowbird because my older two boys were in um, this national ski and snowboard competition. And I left my wife and two boys to fly home. My youngest son, Thursday night, um, was at the, he qualified for the county declamation contest, right? And I don't know if any of you guys know, know what a declamation contest is. It's basically a speech contest. Um, they had everybody in uh, all the counties and all the schools, th in all the schools in the county, they had to pick, they, they gave them a topic, like the, the first lady that's had the biggest impact in history. Right? So they had to pick a first lady and do a speech on it. And Austin, my sixth grader, he it was just middle school students, so he did it for his class and he won. And then he did it for the entire middle school, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, and he won that. So he got nominated to go to the county. Right? So I went home and we're driving to the county. It's at the courthouse, right? And there's about 100 people there. And the judges for the competition are actually the district court judges for Gallatin County. Right? So it's kind of a big deal. And my youngest son, so we're, we're driving there. It's about a 50, 55-minute drive, right? And so he's practicing on the way. So the first time he does it, it the speech, it can't be longer than five minutes, and it's got to be at least four minutes. So you've got to kind of nail it right in there. So the first time he does it, it's really good. And then we practice again, and he's like, you know, it's, he, he does it perfectly. And we're, we're about 15, 20 minutes away, and he, he, so he tries it again. He's like, I'm going to do it again. Hey, Nate. Um, so he, he gets midway through the speech, and he screws up, right? Loses his place, kind of like Peter was talking about, hey, can I start again? And I was encouraging him. I was like, hey, Austin, just keep going in case you screw up again. And then he starts getting emotional. Are any of you guys emotional? You know, youngest children are usually emotional. Um, he, my, my youngest, he, he's pretty emotional. He starts freaking out. He's like, ah, I suck. I'm going to screw up in front of all these people, in front of 100 people. It's going to be terrible, you know, and... So I calmed him down, and, and he, I was like, buddy, you want to do it again? He goes, yeah, i got, I got to get it right so I don't screw it up. So he, does it, he starts it again, and he gets about a third of the way through this time, and he screws up, right? And he's like, ah, it's going to be terrible! You know, and there's, there's tears start to be involved. And um, I, don't, I don't know if any of you guys have ever heard the term mental mushroom. Um, anybody ever heard that, where you kind of start to make a mountain out of a molehill? And so, so this, he just works himself into a frenzy, and he gets, he gets more frustrated, and he's like, I'm going to do terrible, it's going to suck, it's going to be terrible, it's going to be terrible. I think some of the things that we learn from failure will have the biggest impact in our life, right? Who's, who's, got, a, who's got a definition for failure? What, is, what does that even mean, except for Jenna? Who would, who would guess? Who got a... What does failure mean? Jessica? When you have expectations and you don't fulfill them. Okay. Anybody else? What, is, what does failure mean? Um, not making your standards. Okay. I like that. I, I cited Wikipedia. Fail, in Wikipedia, it says, failure is the state or condition of not meeting a desirable or intended objective. Right? Pretty close. And may be viewed as the opposite of success. So, makes sense? So, yeah, I'm, I'm risking failure. I just kind of put this talk together, so we'll see how it goes. You guys can tell me. <laughs> um, 
So, so why is failure okay? What do we learn from failure? What not to do. What not to do. Could be, right? Here, anybody ever heard of a, an individual named Theodore Zeus Gazelle? Anybody heard, heard that name? Actually, you have. You just know him by a different name. He, he's quite popular this time of year as people graduate. One of his books is the most common graduation gift in America, and it's called Oh, the Places We'll Go. Has anybody ever seen that book? Who, you know who I'm talking about? The guy named Dr. Seuss, right? Does anybody know Dr. Seuss's story? What do you, what do you know? Not, not quite that many, but the, the first book he wrote, he took to 26 different publishers, and they all rejected him, you know, or they said no to him. And then finally he took it to the 27th, and they said yes. And now we all know Dr. Seuss, you know. See, the thing about failure, what, what, what do we normally think of when we think of failure? I mean, how many of you guys immediately like bad? Right? Failure. I mean, that's the first thing that goes, you're bad. When you really think about it, though, aren't there a lot of things we've learned from failing and keep trying? Like, what's, what's, what's something that we all now do because we tried, failed, tried, failed, tried, failed, and kept going? Trying our shoes. Brushing our shoes. Ah, yes. <laughs> How many of you guys remember trying your shoes the first time? You know, it didn't work, and the whole time, yeah. Riding a bike. Ah, riding a bike. Who remembers the first time they rode a bike? I still can't ride a bike. <laughs> right? <laughs> how, do, I mean, how, we, we crash, don't we? I mean, we, we actually, we learn how to crash, and then we learn how to crash well, so that we don't get hurt, and then we eventually learn how, right? What else? I mean, how to walk. You ever watched a little baby learn how to walk. I mean, it's all involved in falling. Falling and falling well, and then getting up and falling and falling and falling. I mean, isn't, isn't that really true? I mean, failure is, is, is actually fundamental in most of the things. I wrote down swimming. How many of you guys remember learning how to swim? Now, here's the thing about swimming. Where do we learn how to swim? Yeah, I mean, how many of you guys went out in the ocean <laughs> on a boat, you know, and you learned how to swim? We don't do that, right? We learn how to swim in a pool where you can touch the ground and lifeguards and that kind of stuff in, a, in an environment that, that makes the most sense, right? Um, I wrote down uh, how you look at failure or trying really becomes a habit, right? How many of you guys know who Thomas Edison is? Hopefully all of us, right? What did he do? Electricity, a light bulb, right? Edison said, and I love this quote, I have not failed. I have just found 10,000 ways that won't work. Right? The whole idea of, of trying and developing what's called resiliency. Has anybody ever heard of that word? Resilient? What does resiliency mean? Not giving up? Sure, Chelsea. I mean, I mean that the, my same sighting says the ability to bounce back from obstacles. You know, the thing is, I firmly believe most people in this world, most people on this campus, we do things to keep from falling behind as opposed to get ahead. Mostly because we've been conditioned by some kind of failure. You know? Who's, who's probably the greatest basketball player that's ever walked the face of this earth? I mean, Michael Jordan. And, and I don't know if Thomas said this, but I went to University of North Carolina, so I'm biased. But it, it is Michael Jordan, right? Um, who, kn who knows Michael Jordan's story? Do you know? All I know is that he was cut from the high school basketball team. Yeah. Is that what you were going to say? Yeah, I mean, so he went to Laney High School in Wilmington, North Carolina. They had tryouts. At the end of the tryouts, the coach pulled him aside, right? And he said, he called him Mike. He wasn't Michael yet. He was just Mike. And he said, Mike, thanks for really working hard and trying out. Sorry you're not going to be good enough this year to play with us. I hope you will practice 
try again and come back next year. Right? And have, have any of you guys ever read any, any books that Michael Jordan's written? Some great books. In, in most all the books he writes, he says that that single event had more to do with him becoming the person and the player that he became than anything else that ever happened. Right? He, actually, he actually did a Nike commercial about failure. Uh, this is when you guys were young. I don't know if anybody remembers this commercial, but it's the only Nike commercial I know of that didn't have any action in it. Right? It was a black limo pulls up to the United Center, which is where the Chicago Bulls play basketball. Right? And it was Michael Jordan getting out of the limo, and he's dressed head to toe in black. Black suit, black shirt, everything. Doesn't say anything, just walks into the United Center. And there's a voiceover with his voice on it. And what he says in the commercial, he says, In my lifetime, I've taken 6,000 shots that missed. He said, Over 200 times, teams that I've been on have taken the court, and we lost. He said, 26 different times, my teammates entrusted me to take a last-second shot with the game on the line, and I missed. And then what he said is, because I fail over and over and over again, I can succeed. Right? This whole idea of really not how to fail, but why to try. Right? Because, I mean, when you think about things, you know, I wrote down... Character comes from trying and getting back up and keeping going, doesn't it? You know, I, I started this off and I was telling you about my son Austin, right? And so he's hysterical. We're about five minutes from the courthouse and he, he finally kind of gets it together and um, he does the, the speech again for me in the car and he does it perfectly. You know, we go into the courthouse and the way it works is they have, there's nine of them, they have all of them go up to the front. Right? And it's, it's mostly girls. It's seven girls and two boys. And if you guys remember in middle school, girls are like giant compared to boys. <laughs> and my son's really short to begin with. So here's Austin, and there's like seven girls that are like this tall, right? And they, they draw straws, and he's picked eighth to go. So he has to sit there while everybody else goes. And um, so he gets up there when he was eighth, and he does a phenomenal job, and he wins, right? He wins the, the county declamation contest. And where character comes from is facing adversity and trials and tribulations and not giving up and keeping going, you know? And what and you think about it, what, what keeps us from trying? Are we? Fear of... Well, fear of failing. What else? Fears what others will think. Sure. I mean, what else? What other kind of fear? There's lots of them. I'm not good enough. There's a really cool book, um, The Alchemist. Anybody ever heard of that book? Um, and I always struggle with how to pronounce the author's name. Um, it's, it's Paulo Coelho. Does anybody know how? How do you pronounce it? You? Coelho. It's, it, Paul is what's written on the book, but Coelho. And Here's a, a great quote from him. He said, There's only one thing that makes a dream impossible to achieve, and that's the fear of failure. You know? Here's the, here's the thing, though. We learned all these things. Like, we learned how to, what did you say? Ride a bike, um, walk. Um, what else? Is, we're talking about swimming. I mean, all these things we learned by trying and, and then screwing up and keep going. So, so when do we... When do we stop trying? When or why? Why do we stop trying? Now, the juggling thing, right? How many of you guys know how to juggle before you walked in the room? I, I didn't see, but I heard Megan was a good juggler. Was she good? Yeah. All right. So now, did any of us kind of look at those balls when somebody turned to us and said, all right, now you try, and you were like, uh oh man, I don't, I don't want to try that. <laughs> anybody, anybody, anybody like that? You know, or, or some of us tried and failed, and, and we keep going. This whole greatest failure thing, and I really appreciate you guys sharing that. Where, where that came from, where I, where I got that question was, when, when I was a graduate of the University of North Carolina, um, I, was, I was very blessed to have a great resume. And it wasn't because of my GPA, because I left my GPA off my resume. 
um, but I had worked in the, the Southwestern Advantage summer program all the way through college, and my resume was awesome. I mean, I had seven job interviews, and I got six job offers. Um, but one of, the, one of the interviewers asked me, and he said, what's your greatest failure? Right? So, so what I would ask you is, if you owned a company, right? Qatari Incorporated, right? And you came to San Diego State University, and you were looking to hire a graduating senior. And you asked the question, what's your greatest failure? And somebody said, I don't know. What would you think? Okay, so what you okay, that's what you're, if I hired this person, that could, what could possibly happen, is that what you mean? What about the rest of us? What would that take? I mean, I don't, I don't know what the, everybody would have a different, there's not like a right or wrong answer, but I'm curious what some of the rest of you guys think. What would you think, Megan? Um, yeah, that they don't know how to be resilient. What, what were you going to say, Kat? Gotcha. So would you, would you want to hire somebody like that? Not necessarily. Why not? Because eventually we're all going to face failures. A, a good thing to think about or, or figure out. You know, and I'm, uh, I need to skip some stuff, but I'll, I'll, I'll jump through because I want you guys to be able to talk about stuff. This whole like trying and stuff, I, I think um, I shared this with the group earlier. Um, the thing that, like I, I worked in, in the Southwestern Advantage summer program and a lot of you guys know that. I think the thing that sets apart our internship from anything else, from anything else somebody could do in the summertime is that you have a chance to fail, right? Even if you got an internship at the White House and got to work with President Obama himself. What makes what we do in the summer different is because you have a chance. Because if you ran the White House and you had an intern that worked with President Obama, would you give him a chance to fail? No way. You wouldn't let him make any decisions. Are you kidding me? Too much is riding on it, right? You wouldn't let some idiot college student make anything, anything that, would, that would fail, you know? Totally. You have a chance to fail. Here's the thing about having a chance to fail. If you also have a chance to fail, or if you have a chance, what does that mean you also have? What's that? What do you really? A chance to succeed. Actually, if there's no chance to fail, is there ever a chance to succeed? I mean, you can't have one without the other. One defines the other, right? And here's the thing about the idea of success. It builds confidence, right? The biggest thing I have seen that will affect whether you as a student go after your dreams or life or not is your level of confidence. And the only way we build confidence is by successes, by successes and failures and successes. Think about it. You know, if there was a, a really hot guy or girl out there and you went out there right after this meeting and you asked them out on a date and they said yes, would you feel good? Absolutely, right? Absolutely. The ability to have a chance to fail, you know? That's what separates what we do. And that's where that confidence comes from. And I think that's the biggest thing that will affect whether you go after your dreams or not. So, I, I, if you've heard me speak, I, I, I always say this every time, but you know, coming to a seminar is great, and hearing somebody speak is really cool, but it really doesn't have a lot of value for you long term. What does have value is if you decide that like, when, you, before, when you walk out the door, you're actually going to do something in life that's going to impact you, that will have way more lasting value than hearing me talk. So, here's what I'd like for you to do. Um, get, get back in your, little, in your juggling groups, right? And uh, here's, what, here's what I'd like to talk about. A, is there anything that was of value that I said? You could share and introduce yourself. 
And then B, what's something that you could implement into life from this? Does that sound cool? So, switch back up and talk amongst yourselves and do.